Hey guys and welcome back for another awesome flashlight review. Today we will be talking about the HP 30R from Phoenix as well as the HP 35R, the newest model of their really bright headlights. Uh, for those of you that follow me on Instagram know that I'm, uh, I've been using this one for the last uh, year or so during my expeditions. I'm a really big fan of the light with the rotary switch on the side and then the spot and flood lights uh, and the different levels that you can use with the battery pack that you can either mount on the uh, helmet or with a longer cable mounted to your belt. So uh, I announced earlier that I will do a comparison video between the HP 30R and the HP 35R. So we will set this one aside for the moment. The most important thing is that you have to decide when buying the HP 35R if you want the search and rescue version with the sturdy plastic strap that is only made to be mounted on a helmet. It's not sitting very comfortable on the head with this uh, headband. This is uh, a light that I got borrowed from a friend and this is the normal uh, version with the strap that we used to know it, uh, textile strap. So it's uh, more versatile with this strap than with this strap but both versions are quite good so if you will be working uh, on industrial sites or so i recommend to use this one you can uh, put the band even aside and glue this one to the helmet so that uh, it will not fall off and you don't need the head strap i just wanted to show you the comparison of the two boxes so the HP 30R that we have been using so far has uh, 3000 lumen compared to 4000 lumen uh, of the HP 35R. They both run on two 21700 batteries. The biggest difference is that this one has uh, swappable batteries and this one has a, a battery pack that is not, uh, well you can't swap it out. That's a bit uh, a shame in my eyes. I prefer to be able to switch the batteries while exploring and then you will just carry this uh, bulky battery around and uh, yeah, you don't need it. That's a bit a shame. But the good thing is they have the same connectors so you can use this battery pack uh, with this light. I will measure it later on in my Ulrich ball to see if the output is uh, exactly the same. If uh, we use this battery pack, but normally it should because it's the same voltage and everything. So uh, for the rest, it's the packaging like we know it from Phoenix with a lot of information already printed on the uh, outside of the box. So I will uh, put all the technical specifications underneath the video of the both slides so you can easily compare them. We have a maximum runtime of 120 hours compared to 500 hours on the newer version. Maximum beam distance of 450 meters, that's due to the bigger reflector for the spotlight. And here we only have 251 meters. For the rest it's pretty much the same, expect it's a bit brighter and it has a few different features. So we'll set the HP 30R aside and unbox the 35R. So first thing you probably notice is that it also has a different battery compartment color. I don't know if this will be with all the uh, search and rescue versions if they will be gray or not but well, it doesn't really matter. So we have the flashlight, the battery pack, also here we have a longer cable if you want to put the battery pack on the belt or in the backpack or whatever. And then we have a charging cable, USB-C to normal USB and you can unplug the adapter and then it's USB-C to USB-C. So that's really thoughtful of them. Then you will always have the right power connector to charge it. We also have the 
user interface in different ma uh, in different languages, warranty card and a little flyer with publicity to other products. So we will take off the note here. As you can see, it's the same slide mechanism so that you can just take it off. In my eyes, the battery case of the HP 30R is better because they also uh, provide like a little metal housing where you can easily attach it to a belt. Don't know why they didn't just stick to that one, but uh, they probably had their idea behind it. So you can charge it via USB-C here. And you can also use it as a power bank if you put press the button once you have the battery indicator on the back really nice metal housing like on the hp 30r i asked phoenix you can't buy the straps separately and uh, it's also a different uh, end plate here you can't take the light out of the end plate so you have to really think about which version you want to buy because afterwards it's not going to be possible to change anything about it. I tried replacing this headlight or headband with the headband of the HP 30R that works very fine. This headband is a bit better because it's uh, way thicker as you can see or wider so it will better sit on the helmet than the HP 30R but I will probably be using it with the other battery pack so I will figure out a way to either use this uh, strap or just go with the other strap as it always worked during my expeditions. So let's go into the user interface so we have the same uh, so we have a similar rotary switch with a few info sprinted on the side. So you turn it on and it will turn on in the spot mode. Push the button to cycle through the different modes. Double click is not going anywhere. The light has memory. So if you put it on in the brightest mode, turn it off, turn it on again, it will Memorize it, turn one step further and we are in the flood mode, different modes. And then one step up, we have all the lights combined for maximum output. So that's really nice. The light also has a sensor. So as soon as an object appears in front of it, it will dim down. I'm not sure if we see it on the video. We'll go into a higher mode. And now you can see that it dims down. That's pretty handy if you have it in a backpack or so. Mm, then it will not overheat or burn stuff. I had already multiple trouser pockets that have melted due to high LED output and uh, enormous heat that they produce. So I will take the user manual and we will go over a few of the technical specifications. So for the LEDs it uses one HP 70 neutral white LED for the spotlight and two luminous SST20 warm white LEDs for the uh, spotlights. So that's really nice that it's not cool white anymore. The uh, spotlight is uh, a really nice color and the other ones are I think about 4500 Kelvin. So really nice warm uh, tint. I really like those warm lights. As you can see, the LEDs are sitting in some nice clean reflectors, a smooth reflector for the spot and some not orange peel, but like uh, honeycomb uh, pattern uh, reflector for a really nice smooth beam for the 
floodlights. For the weight, including the headband and the batteries, it's about 433 grams, so it's quite heavy, but uh, for those who know me, I don't care about heavy headlights because I like the sheer output of them. If you stand in big chamber, it's really important to have a lot of power, and then I really prefer to have uh, a heavier headlight that produces a lot of light than small lights, uh, which I uh, have to carry around uh, an extra headlight or uh, handheld light to illuminate everything. So I will not go over all the different output modes. I will uh, put them in the uh, description and I will also measure it in my Olbisch ball. So the turbo is only available if, uh, or with 4000 lumen is only available if the spot and the floodlights are combined. And they say that it runs for 4 hours and 17 minutes. I will see at what time it will start dimming down. Uh, and then we have a maximum beam intensity of 50,853 candela. So that's uh, quite interesting. And uh, as said, it has a power bank function. To use it, you just have to plug your USB-C cable into the output or the input, or how you want to call it here. And then uh, you can charge and the battery will, or the battery case will automatically uh, stop discharging when it's lower than 6.1 volt. So that's good that it has a battery protection and uh, it's also compatible with fast charging uh, devices up to 20 watt. What's also a pretty cool feature is that you can turn off this intelligent uh, downshifting to do so while the flashlight is off you have to push the button for six seconds and then the light will blink eight times to let you know it is switched off so i will show you now if i go closer to the table nothing will shift down turn the light off to reactivate repeat the step again six seconds the light will blink. I will show you. We move closer to the table. And it dims down. So that's a good and important feature. Really cool. Now we will have a look at the red light function. So that's pretty cool that they uh, installed this one. And therefore you have to push the button on the battery case to blink, another press solid on. It's quite a bright light, so if you work on a construction site or so, uh, this might be very handy. Would have probably been cool if they uh, included a third mode, which would be a bit less bright, because this is quite bright and will probably use a lot of battery. To turn it off again you will just have to push the button again for about one second. So I already went ahead and took the battery of the HP 35R off the head strap to show you that you can mount this one onto the head strap. It will be a bit a tight fit as the head headband of the HP 30 R uh, is slightly narrower so you have to try to get it in but it works it will just be squeezed a bit but for me that's not really important, it's no beauty contest, I need a working flashlight on that I can rely and on that I can switch batteries when we are exploring for 8 or more hours underground. So as you can see this fits like a charm, really cool, I'm really happy about it, maybe in a future version they will go back to swappable batteries as I think search and rescue. Uh, teams also will have spare batteries that they carry around 
and it's easier then to have these uh, batteries taking with you and it's going to be more expensive i suppose as you can see with this battery the light also works without a problem i will measure it uh, thoroughly in my Ulbricht ball to see if there's any difference between this battery pack and the other battery pack but i really doubt that there will be any difference so you can see here you can just open it up and switch the batteries on my next underground expedition i will be taking this setup with me and i'm really curious to see how it will provide how it will uh, deliver the light underground so I will now fully charge up the battery and then measure it and we will see each other outside in the forest for a nice beam shot comparison between this one and the HP 30R V2. So hey guys, we are outdoors now with the HP 35R in the highest mode with the spot and the floodlight combined. They indicate it with 4000 lumen, I only measured 3500 lumen and after only 3 minutes it dims down to 1008 lumen, so that's quite uh, fast that it dims down, it's really hot by then. I will now go to the flood mode with 1200 lumen where I measured only 1044 lumen. After three minutes, it dims down to 300 lumen. So also this is pretty uh, disappointing. I have been using the light quite a lot uh, the last weekend during a three day exploring underground. And uh, while walking, I noticed that uh, it was shifting down quite fast. And now I measured it and well, I confirm that after three minutes, uh, it dims down to 300 lumen. This is the spot mode with 3000 lumen in the highest mode. Here I measured 3200 lumen, but also after three minutes it dims down to 650 lumen. So the lumen indication about this Phoenix flashlight are a bit more off than uh, other lights that I have been reviewing. Um, nonetheless, quite accurate. But what I really don't like about the light is that it dims down so fast. It has a really big head. Uh, it's heavy, so it should at least last double or triple the time uh, and not dim down that much because 300 lumen from the highest flood mode is quite disappointing in my eyes. Another thing which I don't like this much about the HP 35R than the HP 30R is that in the flood mode you have quite a round beam. It's less floodier than uh, the HP 30R, especially in the narrow tunnels you have the, the round spot that you see everywhere. But the Spot mode is really nice because it has way more beam distance. It has 450 meters of beam distance compared to 270 meters of beam distance from the HP 30R. So I will now show you a comparison between the highest flood mode of the HP 35R that you are seeing right now and now the highest flood mode of the HP 30R. It's a way more even light pattern. So I prefer the light pattern of the HP 30R. Now I will go to the spot mode of the HP 30R. You can see less beam distance then from the HP 35R, which I like a lot, and also that it is a neutral white compared to the cool white of the HP 30R. So as you can see, it's not an easy decision which light is nicer. Uh, personally, I like about the HP 30R that you can decide if you want to start in flood or spot mode on the HP 35R you always start in the flood mode and then 
you always start in the spot mode and then you will only reach the uh, flood mode and after that you can combine all the lights together. The HP 30R had a few issues with the rotary switch. I had one light that had been replaced. I got a new version now with a updated switch so I hope that this one will last longer and not break because normally Phoenix lights don't tend to break. I will now walk down or up the street and show you the HP 35R one more time in the highest output mode. So this is the lowest mode, medium high turbo. It's a really nice light but still not the perfect headlight for me. I had high hopes for this one and they have been partially fulfilled. I will now show you the red light which is now blinking and then solid on. Go to the highest mode again. You can always reactivate the highest mode after it dimmed down, but you have to notice that the light is really hot and will soon start dimming down again. So you have to give it some time before it will provide full power again for a few minutes. So it's up to you to decide which light suits you best. Um, I think I personally prefer the HP 30R if the switch is uh, more durable now um, because you have the swappable batteries and you have the possibility to activate float or spot separately and then together as you need it and don't have to skip through all the different modes. So I hope all the questions have been answered. If not, please make sure to put them in the comment section. And as always, I would really appreciate if you could leave a thumbs up and hit the follow button. See you soon, guys. Bye bye.